Hi everyone, Mr. E here with another Tinkercad tutorial for teachers and in this one we're talking about how to create a class and manage your student work and activities in Tinkercad. If you sign in as a teacher, you should have the option to create classes. Students will be able to see this classes tab as well, but only to join a class or participate in a class, not being able to see how to create a class or invite a co-teacher to a class, for example. So after clicking on classes, you'll see any classes that you've already created. And if you want to create a new class, you can of course click this create new class. Here you can enter the name of the class, select a grade or multiple grades that might participate in this class, as well as select subjects that students might be engaging with, and decide whether you want to turn on safe mode, which is something that I would recommend. This prevents your students from making their designs public, and you could always change this depending on what you'd like to do with your class. Once you've created a class, you can add students, and for this, you can actually create student accounts through a seat. This allows you as a teacher to create student accounts, meaning that they won't have to log in with an email address or a password of their own. You can manage the students, you can manage their passwords, you can manage everything by simply naming a student, and then that will create a nickname, which you can adjust if you'd like. Students can then sign in only using their name and their nickname and the class code. You can also paste a list from a roster. Now, you don't have to create student accounts, although that is an excellent thing to do if you're working with younger students in the elementary school level. Students can also sign in using their Google, Microsoft, or other single sign-on account that's supported by Tinkercad, and they would do that through this class link. So when students go to sign in, they can click sign in with the class code, enter this link, and either sign in with their email address or that nickname that you've created if you've made a seat for them. You can, of course, adjust this, copy the code, and share this via a Google Classroom if that's something that you wanted to do. Now, also within a class, you have the ability to create an activity, which is kind of like an assignment in that it really gives your students something to work on, a project, a task, something like that. So we can create an activity, like, for example, Catapult, and you can offer a description. And after creating this activity, you have the option to see your student work. And I should point out that activities work for all types of designs in Tinkercad, from designs, circuits, code blocks, even tutorials, if your students were going to create one of those. You can also share a design with your students. Now, this is a fantastic way to provide a template. So for example, I'm gonna click Create New Design, and I'll make a 3D design for this Catapult project. I'm going to rename this to be Catapult Template. And let's say that I plan on having my students 3D print a part to their catapult, but they're constrained with how much space or volume they can use. I could adjust my work plane to say that students have 80 millimeters by 80 millimeters in work plane size, because that's how much space they have to design their parts or the biggest their part can be for this project. I might also include some things for them to work with. So for example, they might be working with a ping pong ball. So I could bring a sphere into the shape, make it look like a ping pong ball, and dimension it to be the same size as a ping pong ball that students would have to work around. When students sign in and they go to their class and they click on the activity, they will see this template and they can start working on this project using this template to design around. So any constraints that you create in the template will be seen by your students. Creating a starter design like this for students to work with is not at all required when you make an activity, but it is a great differentiation tool for students to work with as they begin to design parts for real world prototype solutions using Tinkercad. It's also always a good idea to have your students name their designs to help you sort through projects when you download and export them for manufacturing. But when you go back to your class and you go to your activity, you will see your student work and anything that's been submitted by a student down here if you had multiple students submitting things. You as the teacher can not only preview these things, but you can also go into the design to edit them. Or what I like to do is enter the design and provide comments and feedback. These comments will be viewable by the student when they go back into their design later. You as the teacher can also click on a student and see all of their projects that they've created, whether it's been for an activity or not, 
And as discussed in another one of my videos, you can award skill badges as students learn how to create things successfully using Tinkercad based on different challenges and constraints tied to real world concepts and standards for curriculum like the ISTE standards. When a class is finished, you can choose to archive or delete the class. And you as a teacher can enroll in a class as well if you switch to the Enroll tab and type in a class code. It's important to also understand that students can join classes without the class code as well. They can always head over to their classes and join a new class with the class code and be enrolled in multiple classes as well. Thanks so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and check out more Tinkercad tutorials on my channel.